Hello and welcome to Campaign Comrades, your favorite leftist gaming podcast. It is just me, Ben, and Matt today. We got a, a two-man I'm, I'm the operation. leading comrade on duo episodes. I've run more duo episodes than any other person on this podcast. No, I'm pretty sure you have the you have the, the strongest. I also have the here. single, like, the streak for being on the most episodes consecutively. Yeah, it's been a long time since I missed one, but... Uh... Yeah, but, but there was oh, that peak where you were you were sick. Yeah, Mike was going through law school, so there was like four straight weeks of just me and Andrew running the pod. You guys did swimmingly. Those are the only episodes that I've gone back and listened to. Are the ones that hard I'm, to listen that, to yourself that I'm not on. Those are the only ones that I've listened to. The ones that I'm not on because I like to show support to my brothers. Um. But in a, in a lot of ways, you know, the the essential for this week's topic, I'm not throwing shade at the other two, but like the the essential participants for this the two movie people are, who played the most are DMD present and have yeah. DM'd. Yeah. So we are covering the Dungeons and Dragons movie, which I forgot had a subtitle, The Honor Among Thieves. Honor Among Thieves, because we uh, love movies with secret subtitles so that you can have sequels. Uh, but yeah, so we are the two like you know actually experienced D and D players and those who have yeah. I have an encyclopedic those. knowledge of all the spells that you can cast. What of it? I did like try to keep a running list of like the spells. Dude, there that were I definitely noticed. some in there that aren't spells at all, and I will, I will. Oh sure, there's probably a bunch, but like I was like trying to like you know be like oh those are like some you know some of the cooler kind of subtle ones. But then I, you, get, I did a, you get to the final fight, and it was like, there's too many for me to try to keep yeah. track of. I, I did some real some real lore digging where I watched both the Cinema Sins and the Cinema Wins for, mm. for this movie. Oh, I didn't do I didn't do that. What what's uh what did they what did they have to say? I mean, Cinema Sins in their normal round of not really knowing the source material they're talking mm. about were just kind of like they did hit a couple of the big ones. Like, hey, that's a lot of wild shapes in one <laughs> one little session there, bud. I wanted to look up, although our insight into that into that one because that is a point that I made note of in my little note sheet here. That like in in the escape sequence that we'll get to, um, she does seven wild shapes in a row. And granted, that could have that. I was like, that's too many for whatever level she is. Yeah um and they could have reduced uh, they could have they could have changed it though by you know whatever the fucking new rules are that they well she could have also just stayed in cat form at one point just like maintained cat uh there there was a lot of like just shifting to shift because it made for a cool action sequence yeah she shifted to like a mouse twice in the same thing so it's like "Mm, is that really necessary and then there's like there's a little bit of nitpicking like yeah, you can't wild shape into an owlbear. That's a you monstrosity. Can, you can now. You can. That was that was an interesting one. It's like that's how the movie then had a backwards influence on the game. Is that since that came out and was pretty popular, they changed that rule. You can wild shape into an owlbear, or at least again, my my see, whole I was fully my, my whole knowledge. Defen- my whole I was knowledge fully of the prepared to do the defense the of like point. druids can use polymorph. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite one of my favorite uh bits and i think it was from a critical role thing it was like they were the party didn't fully understand how polymorph worked so they changed one of themselves into a fly um without thinking that it was like wild it wasn't a fly it was a moth and it was laura gets turned into a moth to go spy on someone and just not realizing that they get the the brain brain, capacity of a moth the the brain of a moth so so it's just just lands on a curtain and just starts eating the curtain (laughs) yeah yeah it was good um uh, i like that one. i i that know was, that was one of the few great moments of matt mercer's dming where he's like yeah do that okay now you're a moth which means you have the brain of a moth yeah, it just flitters away that was good uh all right so i have a list of notes here for this movie but uh i mean we just kind of jumped right in there's one thing i really want to shout out is that this movie does practical costuming really well yeah, there are some that I I liked better than others. Like I think the I think Jonathan the Eric Ocro was the best one. The, Jonathan! the uh the Tabaxi and the in the in the Dragonborn Minotaur? were like kind oh. of like oh, he was, eh. yeah. 
were kind of like Meh. the dragonborn were better i didn't like the debaxi at all uh, that literally looked like i just appreciated like that they went that. for it and oh, they did sure. just full cgi the entire cast 100 100 percent. um but speaking of jarnathan i just want to say uh jarnathan is totally... can't reach flying speed while carrying heavy objects <laughs> I was going to say that Jonathan is totally, you know, a name that your DM make made up on the spot for just a random that the, NPC. That the players just hung on to? Yeah, completely. That the that the party just gets inevitably just gets obsessed with. So it becomes like a recurring character and ends up having some sort of like tragic backstory. I actually think that that opening sequence is another one of those quintessential D&D moments. Because it's like the players have a plan. They've got this plan down. You know, we're going to execute it flawlessly. And then the DM throws one little monkey wrench in. And he was like, where's Jarnathan? Jarnathan isn't there. He's late. He's running late. You got to stall. Yeah. So like, you know, involving some charisma roles and, and stuff like that. The I, I did think it That's was. They a... pass their charisma roles and they get the part in. Right, 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 right. But, but was... the, the best part is that's when Jarnathan comes in. That's the dangling of the carrot by the DM doing the like, oh, you want to execute your plan? He's here now. You've already won, though, but you don't know that yet. Yeah. Uh, I did think in terms of, like, the movie side of it that using this, using that that kind of, their, their parole hearing, and because it starts off, the two characters are in jail, in Icewind Dale, chop it ice. Uh, but, like, using that parole board you Get a little Michelle Rodriguez as, uh, uh, being a badass on a hobgoblin. Uh, yeah, breaking his knees was good, and then uh, to save her potato. Uh, but the the uh, this like kind of expedition dump framing it as through the parole board hearing was like kind of a clever way because it's like you know you're it's like why are we in prison? It's like your your character backstory, and then yeah, it was, it was a it was a decent tool too. I wasn't sure if like that, okay, that could was... absolutely be the the hook start to a D and D campaign where your your party is in jail together. And then they're doing their parole hearing and they get to lore dump their backstories to each other. That is a good one. It's like, why my, my thought was like, was that their intention from the start or it was something about the, and this is like from like a pure audio perspective, it sounded in terms of the, some of the voiceover, it like a lot of it mm-hmm. struck me as like that this could have been um, uh, reshoots that they, that they had to reshoot some things. I mean, it is, it is a like, little over two hour movie because of credits i'll so say they probably didn't want to extend it movie, too much longer the movie is too long i'll i'll, I'll, I'll i think I'll i think it probably overextends that. itself by about 15 i don't think i don't think an hour and a half would be like i think it would be a little rushed at an hour and a half I feel like an hour and 45 would probably be the sweet spot yeah it's just a it's a bit long but uh yeah the um we get this this frame this framing of character backstory through the parole parole board healing, hearing, and we are first introduced to our main character played by Chris Pine, the Bard Ed. Which I, I'm wondering. I was about to like, do the whole like I was really trying to pay attention to character names last night, so I'd get him down, but I was still just going to call him Chris Pine. Yeah, the only ones that I could I could remember were were uh, Olga. Olga, and I think that's it. Um, Zink. I didn't even like. I found him like in all my notes. I just refer to him as the paladin. Yeah, because um, he, he's. I he's mean, a character you don't even need to call him the about. paladin. He's just the DM NPC. Right. The, I, I, you 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 beat me to it. Um. So he's he's the over leveled DM controlled NPC that that he ins- that you know that your DM inserts. To, to herd know, help, the cats along, yeah, to the help story your, path, help your dumbass party, uh, you know, along. No, the way. dude, like when he when he gets to the bridge right before the helm of destruction, he's like laying out the complex pattern to solve the puzzle. I was like, yo, that is a DM who spent night after night putting together what he believes to be like a challenging but fair puzzle, and then the players immediately fuck it up, like beyond, like before it even starts. Um. Let's rewind a little bit. Uh, we've got our. Let's go through our characters. We've got Ed the the Bard, who is also a Harper. Um, the, the only question I have for Ed is, um, Bards can use magic. Yeah, they don't. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's an interesting it strikes thing. Strikes me like, almost more like a rogue who's pretending to be a bard than an actual bard. Yeah, but he doesn't have other like, than the, the fact that he fails all his rolls constantly. Yeah, he doesn't really have like the the combat efficiency of a rogue. Um, he is more like meant to be. I mean, because there are like different colleges, right? Of, yes. Of, and different types of bards, but they all they all still have access to spells. Like the the closest he has is when he at the very end, you know, cast the resurrection spell, basically. Yeah, which like, which was has, using an item. Yeah, he has some kind of, but yeah, he still had an incantation he had to, yeah, he had to know and deliver. But uh, but I didn't make I did kind of notice notice that myself that it was a bit odd that they didn't give him any spell casting, especially but. considering like they do really go pretty hard with like animating the spells to make them interesting and like Simon's like spell component wheel. Like, that's a pretty cool little, like, way of illustrating instead of having him have, like, a billion pouches on himself that he's trying to rummage through. Yeah, it was a clever use of that, and I like how they... It, it still ended up all just being basically hand gibberish, but apparently yes. they they did spend some time, like, creating unique signs for for each spell, including incorporating some it's actual It's got to be so hard to do him. that stuff and not immediately, like... On your fifth iteration, being like a level one shrine yeah, or yeah. domain expansion yeah. or, or some, you know, some, Naruto some type, Toon Shadow yeah, some clones. Type of, some type of Naruto Jutsu. jutsu. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that is often what it just looked like. Um, it's just him just going bibbity bobbity boo. Uh, yeah. It was a little too it was a little too exaggerated. I did I, I did like the spell component wheel. That was cool, but like um and a little bit more subtle but yeah the, the hand movements were a little were a little extra a little zesty uh okay so one we... of the one of the videos i watched i think it might have been cinema wins kept referring to him as uh, detective pikachu <laughs> yeah, yeah. um i'm not the biggest fan of that actor i don't i don't i don't dislike him i know some, he's got some he's got people... he's got no aura he's got well, no riz as yeah the people, be, would say. people be like whenever you see this guy in the movie you know it's going to be a stinker and yeah. it's like maybe kind of uh i mean like... i'm not gonna lie the little bits of poking and prodding at him being like a depressed person who makes everyone around him sad not like <laughs> I mean, little, had, little bits of humor there. Yeah, the, the character had more going for it than I think the the most the most rizless uh, the charisma dump stat character was definitely the uh, what's her name Doric the druid. Yeah, um, you know, was most exciting when she was in the owl bear shape. You know? Yep. And they you know, were very... we tried to date each other, and you said I made you sad, but not like anything I did, just like who I am. Very, very cowardly of them to not like make uh, her the tiefling like uh, red or purple. I was or, blue gonna, or something. That was something where I didn't pick up on initially. It was like it was such a quick like throwaway. It was like, oh, she's a tiefling. She's a tiefling, yeah. Because like you don't really notice the tail that often, so the horns could just be kind of like a druid mantle that they're wearing. Or a... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, she just looks more like an elf. Yeah. At least I like think... change her skin color, make her like purple or something that's what i was saying like you know do like do like a slight purple or something but that would yeah either they would have had to do maybe they like tested that and just be like because they i will again commend them as you already pointed out they like they largely went practical whenever they could yeah. um, practical and makeup whenever they could so like you know putting her in it wouldn't have been like that difficult to like do that much makeup uh, on her, that's a no, pretty. That's still that's hours pretty minor of setup one. every no, day. No, but it's probably more. I just think like it. It would have. To, it was more like the, the the effort. It probably to also pay, to pay off ratio is like how yeah. would it affect lighting and. I was just about to say the lighting and, and color like of scenes could be difficult that way, because there's a couple spots where even Chris Pine, at least on the version I watched, like little red, little less tan. That they were mm -hmm. definitely doing some color shift in the uh, post processing. He's 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 supposed to be a bit of a drunk, so you know he's got that he's got that rosacea. All right, but we 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 still we still keep moving past the 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 all the characters. So we've got yes. we've got Ed the Bard, who just by naming him Ed, but he's got his full name is something like Ed Edgin Darvis. I was thinking like, oh, just calling him Ed is that like a reference to Ed Greenwood, the the creator of the um 
of Faerun and the Forgotten Realms. Uh, that that the whole setting that largely most very well could be common could have also been a, a nerd in the department who's a big fan of Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. You <laughs> never know. Uh, yeah. So he's the he's our he's our main character here. Then we've got Olga the Barbarian, played by um, a quintessential Michelle Rodriguez role. Yes. Yes. Um, now she got plenty of her opportunity to. Uh, I had like tier rankings of like who's putting in the most effort and in where and like yeah, she's like in her moments she's putting in the most effort and it's I think I had a note here somewhere uh, accurate depiction of the barbarian doing all the work. Um, yep, of like of like her fight scenes, you know. Yeah, so like when like they're two, when they're about the to get executed. The yeah, she's just, just doing doing everything. It was like. My my note on that scene in particular was Ed is failing every single role to get out of his his, <laughs> his bonds, and and she is just girl bossing all the way around. The this when she picks up the the brick and blocks the axe and then smashes him in the head. I had a big old smile on my face. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it it was a a pretty damn good depiction of a barbarian, with one exception of they didn't like give a clear indication of i'm going into a rage yeah you know like she had she had like a rage factor but like it just it wasn't strong as strong and exaggerated enough to be like well yeah this but is, there, there's this is also my like, regular this is my regular yeah. base angry state like the the you know the the trick is cap i'm always angry type of thing yeah to to like like that i would like i would uh, please, rage. Please, you know please i would like to rage that kind of yeah that kind and of like there, there's a little like. fine line there because like you don't want to a you don't want to step on the the critical role and have the have it grog where it's like i would like to rage now yeah um i, I wish that they, she kind of did i mean because they did a critical role joke reference with the from the new campaign with the fresh fresh cut grass spell uh but that was you know so they're not afraid to do that um because obviously, like that's such a rabid fan base, you know, that they would be hooting and hollering and pointing at the screen and clapping like seals if they were to do that. They would probably go multiple times to catch all of the references, right? So I, I don't, I wouldn't have thought. Less Says of the person who's seen the movie like. four times. Yeah, this was only my second watch. Because did we watch it together the first time? Yeah, we watched it together. I then watched it by myself afterwards. And then I watched it last week in a delirium of cold medicine. Yeah, thinking that we were covering it last week instead. I didn't know you watched it again yourself. Um, interesting. You know, earlier. It was interesting. All right, so we, so that's Ed and Olga. They've got a long history together. Um, after the death of of Ed's wife, killed by the uh a a red wizard and their disciples which are like you know the the whole big bads of the of the campaign, just saying we'll, give we'll red say. wizards in this movie given the red mages of final fantasy a bad rap i mean they're 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 you know they're in the setting lore but what in in what way just i mean because red mages are not necessarily bad and yeah red red fantasy. mages in final fantasy are just your jack of all trades they can do black magic white magic martial weapons I but like they're the, not they're not I a like master the, i them. like the joke of you know say that red wizards are not very popular um you know outside of say you know, like <laughs> not very popular here but like yeah uh so they like have the longest run history like basically holga is like the surrogate mother to yeah kind of like the auntie kid. yeah but like it, basically is the only like kind of mother figure that the kid uh actually knows and they're, they're not what... super subtle with the beating you over the head with that part of the, the story i couldn't tell you what the kid's name was and she sucked um, yeah uh so we can ignore her even though it's an important part of ed's plot and character arc um but what well, yeah whatever then we have oh here it is kira uh yeah, yeah whatever Don't i mean care. there's like there's one great line set up with Chris Pine when he's talking to her, when when he, they break out and they meet they meet up for the first time, and it's like, why wouldn't you tell me you're trying to bring mom back? And it's like, well, I didn't want you to lose her twice. It's like what one of the few moments of like that's actually good characterization, and like you made a good excuse for why you didn't tell someone something. 
we've already mentioned the sorcerer, but he is Simon. Simon. And, yeah, the he's a descendant of of the legendary sorcerer Elminster. Or no, he's a wizard. Elminster was a wizard. Um, yeah, but yeah. The he is a descendant of Elminster. Then the rogue con artist Forge Fitzwilliam, played by um, Hugh Grant, who again is was is at the top of my list of putting in putting in the he's work, ripping off the screen. Yeah, just he's he's definitely putting in the work. Um, and then there's the mysterious acquaintance Sophina the Wizard, who is what sets them along the path of how did just just talking about this real quick how did none of them see this lady do time stop magic and go like huh yeah because wasn't well, like that's a ninth level spell because they, they were uh they uh they like reference it a little bit of like when she casts it and they're like simon counter it and you're like no basically it's she's he says she's too strong but it's basically it's like she's too high level i don't have level nine level yeah, nine spell sense. slots to to counter it uh the yeah so she is the one who convinces them to raid the harper stronghold and he's Ed is that's all off the board. entire plot by intentionally getting people caught yeah so he's off to steal the tablet of reawakening to resurrect his dead wife don't but you yeah, mean the tablet of riches yeah he and the Holy get captured, and then, you know that's the that's the that's the the recap backstory that they give before they escape using Jonathan as a hum, as a humanoid paraglider. Jonathan, the, the scream as he gets the, yeah that that the half the halfling uh, the halfling lady on the on the yeah. on the parole board. Jonathan, uh. I would have I would have hooted and hollered and laughed if it was like the other guys where they dive out the window and die because an Aarakocra can't save them with flying speed at that weight. Uh oh, okay. So there were some other spells, yeah, that that uh I've made notice. So she in that like that scene in, in the, the the that first heist heist scene, um what's her face? Sophina uses chain lightning, which honestly yep. looked super lame. Yep. That was one where it's like, yeah, it's effective and it doesn't need to like look more than that. But like, come on, make it. It's a cool spell. Make it look a little bit cooler. Yeah. Uh, she uses chain lightning and then obviously time stop. Uh, which is yeah, that's a that's a level nine spell, buddy. <laughs> like you see, because I I um I also have a stand, so I can see enemy stands. I saw that she had the world standing behind her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a warudo. It was just like carrying them up and down the staircases. <laughs> the uh yeah so they they get they get sent to jail forge and uh simon they are able to escape and are are, are not imprisoned with them i don't know necessarily what their plan was to like intentionally get them caught but if you look back through that scene um ed is the one who sets off the the alarm with the the string on the thing and he only gets caught because he trips. So it was the right. plan to just like hope that he's clumsy enough to uh, fail his dexterity roll when running off across the table. Well, I mean, it was the same deal with in with you know Simon was supposed to be captured too, but like he yeah, he obviously passed his dexterity check. Yeah, um, to Dude, get a wizard it. passing a dexterity check, fucking round of applause. Yeah, you know, good for him. The yeah, I think. It, well, they knew that they were going that he was going in for the tablet of reawakening. I just don't know that they would they could have you know, it's a little bit of a logical leap to be like, yeah, that one they're probably just counting on, yeah, there's gonna be some alarm that gets triggered or like that we're just they're yeah. just gonna do the time stop or something. I don't know. It's you know, it's the that's the unknown nature that's the the fate of the dice coming in, right? Yeah. I'm willing to chalk it up to that. Um but yeah, they escape from prison via Jonathan. They they mosey on down to never. We, we city get a of lot of beautiful vista shots that are ruined by like horrible CGI in the background to show like a, a castle or a city or. Yeah, which it, so this was like an interesting bit that I kind of made note of with certain characters. The ones that you notice that are like anytime there's a halfling on screen is like yeah. that they did really well and should have really as far as they as much as they could have and I'm glad that they basically did. You know the practical stuff was really good, and then the CGI was pretty much all dog water. Yeah, 
Well, like the the scene, they did really great forced perspective with Bradley Cooper and Holga. It's best when she's sitting down, but then when he's yeah. like wa- when he's like walking around and stuff, he just you know this doesn't come close to say like the hobbits from you know. No, I was it was more particular the, sit, the sitting down scene, multiple where... multiple decades apart, and yeah, for doing forced perspective so much better. Yeah. Um, whereas that like that clearly is like that's just Bradley Cooper on a green screen. Yeah. You know, that, I, I made I made a particular note of it. Yeah, it's the halfling CGI is just pretty bad. Um, it was also an interesting scene layout because that's one of those like that's a kind of relatable moment for people when you go back and meet an ex and they're dating essentially a carbon copy of you. Uh, so they 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 make it to Neverwinter where they learn that that Forge has become Lord Neverwinter. And he he still is in, he's in he has taken Ed's daughter Kira as his ward basically, and uh, but yeah he's he's done his 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 lie his lying and and plotting and scheming to convince convince her that you know Ed was only about to you know was was trying to yes go after the tablet of riches and just left her behind and you know is a bad father and doesn't care about her and only wants to. You know, it's only out for himself. You know, I was hooting and hollering when all of a sudden Goku instant transmissioned in there and he's like, you think he was a bad dad? I'll show you who's a stronger bad dad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Sophina is, you know, surprise, surprise, revealed to be a red wizard who, you know, orchestrated their capture. She tries to, a cool spell that like, at first I thought it was going to be, it wasn't going to be a spell that it was going to be like the, the animated rug or whatever that was going to capture oh. them, but like it turned the, into the like quicksand. A, a quicksand thing, which was a cool, a cool kind of like almost like homebrew spell. Um, I think there were a couple, and I may have noted another one. There's like there were a couple cool things that were uh, that were clearly homebrew type. I mean, things. the hither tither staff is the... that was it. That was it. That was it. It was the 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 hither thither staff was like a was a cool example of a homebrew magic item. So my my, my point through there was like when we were talking earlier about like the players Im- immediately fucking the puzzle up that was the dm providing them an item countless sessions ago that he knew would be useful but they never got identified and just forgot about in a bag of yeah. holding yeah 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 nobody has the, nobody has the identify spell so like it's just there yeah um until and then it he, takes it takes just dumping it onto the floor because the barbarian's about to do the barbarian thing of i'm going to just tie a rope to my axe and throw it uh before simon noticed he had a portal gun there was a it was one last part of that when he's talking and he's like oh it has a, a range of 500 meters it's like ah he used the he used range so that they're you know like like any magical item yeah they're they're about to get they're about to get got by the the red wizard but they're able to how do they escape? I don't. I don't remember. How did they escape? So they 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 get taken out to get oh, executed. Oh, okay. oh, right. Okay. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. And so then was, Holga like, does the little bit of stalling tactic of like, oh, is that such and such's work? Like, how do you how do you take care of it? Because now she's trying to you know somebody make sure hammer. Yeah, what's his yeah. name? So that she knows how to take care of it once she steals it from him after beating his head in with a brick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Forge talks about how he's bringing back the high sun games and going to be, you know, all these, you know, these gladiatorial events where there'll be lots of betting and, and, and uh, lots of money on the table. And that's what, what sets the seed for the eventual heist that will take, that will take place as they. What, yeah. What was the reason they like, they wanted to, they were they were trying to steal steal back the tablet. The tablet, but they're like, oh, but we need a lot of money for something. There's going to be a lot of so money. So it was, well, it wasn't the money. So the because the the tablet was secured by Mordenkainen's uh, vault. Yeah, and Mordenkainen mentioned what the fuck is a you know is a plane shift spell. Let's go. We love yeah. Mordenkainen. Um. So they end up doing the whole roundabout like oh we need a way of getting around that the only way around that is the helm of destruction who had the helm of destruction it was at this fight let's go interview a bunch of corpses 
Yeah, well, first off, we skipped the part where they they uh, we skipped the part where they, yeah, where they they re recruit Simon, who is doing petty thievery with basically a shitty magic show, which was pretty nice. I like that one, and he does he does a nice reverse. I loved, gravity I loved his use of reverse gravity in that fight, and that then leads to them recruiting Doric, the druid, who he yep. who he fancies. They have her shape shift into a fly. She's the one who discovers the the Mordenkainen's yeah, seal. The Mordenkainen's seal, who Simon believes can only be disrupted by. I love how you're calling it the Helm of Destruction because that's what some someone mis- in the movie mistakenly calls it, but it's the the Helm of Disjunction. Yeah, <laughs> that that can disable all enchantments. Yeah, so they. <laughs> You know, they 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 go on that path to find, and it was it was still a, a really good bit. It was one that was unfortunately I think spoiled by uh, in its initial release through its trailers. Trailer. Like it was like, oh wow, like yes, they really do get D and D. They get how stupid the party is. The the asking the the corpse does that count oh. as a question? Yes, you know, wasting all your five questions. That 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 opening one where he was like, "Don't answer anything unless I ask you to." Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> why'd you Why'd you put okay at I the did. end of that? I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Dead. Uh, beautiful. So there's <laughs> there the best instances, and there's another one too, like where where they're infiltrating the underdark, and there's a bunch of intellect of ours coming yeah, by, and they just and ignore like, them. It's like you know you know careful like empty your minds like they're attracted to you know in, you know the power of intelligence or uh intellectual energy and they just completely ignore them and walk by well yeah. that was hurtful <laughs> uh you know that's that's again another great dm bit of just you know yeah. fucking fucking with them you guys are murder hobo idiots uh so that yeah they're they're trying to get the Oh, okay. So that is the, the they go along this like they're going from corpse to corpse as they're following the trail of this helmet through this battle where it was last seen. And it eventually yeah. it, it's L- it's little know, funny bit there where it's like they, they hand off the helmet to to Sven and they like dig up Sven and he's like, Oh no, I died before the battle. You're you're talking about my brother Ven. He's the one yeah, the that was the one who died getting out of the bathtub yeah uh and yeah they they're just progressing one to the next until they find that it was given to the the helm was given to the paladin guy yeah. zank zank yanbarner yeah a thane of all people and so they yeah they eventually find they find him and he guides them into the the underdark so he he is next on my list for Oh, we 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 did skip over. It's like when they're the when she when she that's when when Doric is the, uh, goes into the castle to and, and finds yeah. out the information about the vault is when they do the escape scene, which is like a cool a cool uh cool section. But yeah, way too I like many that they attempted scenes. to make it a one shot. You know where it's like the camera following her through the whole with no transitions. Attempt, yeah, but like obviously everyone knows while watching it that it's all a fake one shot because you know it's CGI and. You know, masterful use of like camera camera shifting so that when you pass by a suit of armor, you can you know match that up with the next scene. I'm looking up Wild Shape. So Wild Shape, the only improvements you get are the levels of creatures you can turn into. But then you can turn you can do a wild shape. What does it say? Certainly you can use your action magically. Because I'm pretty it sure she says, goes. It, this it only says you can use the feature twice that you you regain after a short rest. Yeah, because she goes fly mouse into a suit of armor as a person back to a mouse dropping it into a falcon count. dropping it to a person doesn't count as part of the thing. It's no, I, I was just laying out the exact stretch of what yeah. she did. Back to a mouse jumps out the window turns into a falcon. Should have just picked a regular ass like sparrow or something. Much harder to figure out. Uh, drops into a chimney, but not as cat. fast. But not as fast. You know, the but also smaller Falcon, target. Fa- to hit. Fastest, fastest flying creature in the world. But a smaller target. You know, that I also had a little bit of nitpicking there of like how the fuck are the guards identifying a mouse falling out of a window? 
and then a falcon flying away and knowing that they need to volley a thousand arrows at it right but yeah into a chimney i, as a I, cat, I made a human. count i made a count it was seven it was she, she yeah. did seven sh- wild shapes human um, into the the, the two legged fucking ostrich creature and then deer and that was the like see i told you she'd be a deer okay so so back to uh zank the the dm controlled npc yeah who who has like this is at the very end when he leaves the best uh, indication of it is the it's, it's a bit of almost a, a video game reference of the the npc pathing yeah, he takes just keeps he, going when, when he walks away. He just walks the straight line and walks yep. over the big boulder. Uh, that was a good call out. Uh, but yeah, so I also enjoyed some... that because there was a little bit of the party trying to like commandeer the DM NPC to be a permanent party member. Like, and the yeah, DM being no. like, No, he walks off into the sunset. This was so that you could fight the big dragon, and that was, and that's it. That was why yeah. he was he was there. Um, because to make it who to doesn't make a... love a chonky dragon though. We love we love Thumberchowd uh, or Thunderchowd as I like to call him. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So in the scene where they're like introduced to to uh, why do I keep blanking on his name to Zank? Yeah. Uh, he has like some of the best lines I think in the in the movie, and like I've 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 pulled out a, a few here. The first one is when he goes up to and like kind of basically like lays hands basically on like a yeah on an aging uh, elderly dragonborn, um, and it's just the gently to you as well, good sir. Whereas like he does that in in, in some language, the yeah. dragonborn thanks him or something. Yeah, probably like what ble- probably means like bless you or something. Uh, gently to you as well, good sir. The the I do not trade in colloquialisms when. Yep. <laughs> when uh she, she says like that forge was the son of a bitch mm-hmm. uh, so you think his mother was the reason for his villainy or whatever <laughs> do not trade in colloquialisms uh another one is i find irony is a blade that cuts he who wields it most especially yep <laughs> that, one. that one cuts me deeply because i'm a deeply ironic humor user yeah um and then of course the follow me to the orifice yep is uh is an, is another great one. So yeah, they 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 dive through, they spelunk through the orifice into the into the underdark, and yeah, yeah, I the uh yeah the the intellect of hours, the the complex bridge puzzle, all things we've mentioned. Dude, already, when he's describing that puzzle, I'm like, yo, I know that I I feel this DM in his heart. He's sitting there, he's like, all right, it can't be that complicated, you know. Um, Every every other step on odd numbers, and every fifth step you move laterally instead of forward, and then at the halfway point you shift it to even numbers, and and a vertical step on the fifth, and it's just like oh man, he he spent so much time and so much effort, and then the player steps on the bridge immediately before fully listening to the the puzzle. And my my note for the hither thither stuff, other than it being a good homebrewed magic item, was just in my notes. I just said, now they're playing with portals. Portal gun. I'm surprised that uh, they even I'm... do the the same o- oval shape that like that they didn't yeah, get. Yeah, uh... it's just not colored. They didn't. Yeah, they, uh... they, they, I'm blue. sure it's Valve blue, would have been like, blue, that is not, a copyright. Yeah, Eric. but not or- the the other one. You know, the 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 hither is blue, but the thither is not orange. So if yeah. not, G- Gaben would have had some 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 strong words i mean maybe maybe gaben wouldn't have been as mad and you know if nintendo made portal they probably wouldn't have even allowed them to make the portals oval shaped that is yeah that they've they've patented over the oval shaped portals yeah it has to be it has to be rectangular and then they get sued by minecraft because minecraft would be like hey <laughs> we're the only people allowed to make rectangular portals uh, when the when the the Thane assassins show up, it was yeah. another good usage of the. Uh, it was Paladin Divine Sense smelling something evil. That was yep. a very good thing for a, a good reference and good execution of a very silly ability. Yep, uh, that you can smell evil. The evil is stinky. Uh, 
that was that was always no, one we of don't know if it's stinky so it's... it could be it could be such a good smell that you're like oh wow smell the lavender evils around it in the in divine sense it says yes it I, does, I know i was just playing say, around that like maybe, maybe evil smells good and we just divine sense it says like it registered yeah it's... Evil registers as a strong, noxious odor. Hey, some people like the smell of gasoline, is all I'm saying. There are weirdos out there. Uh, of course yeah. I know them. I am them. Do they... Okay, yeah, so so they get attacked after they find the... They do find yes. the, the helm, the helm of... Dis, what, what do you call it? Destruction? Destruction. Destruction. Yeah, um, but yeah, they get the helm, but then, then they're attacked by the obese red dragon, Thumber Shroud, uh, who I you know, like didn't exactly steal, but I, I kind of took the that idea for a campaign of my own, where I had a really, I had, I had the party come across a really fat dragon and a bunch of cult, it was like, a, there was a bunch of cultists who were like, trying to appease the dragon and were like feeding him like everything that they wanted so he had grown really fat and it was just like luxuriating in a lava pool uh pretty sure there's an entire section of the internet who would call them abusive pet owners and would tell them to kill themselves yeah so but i I did it as a way to uh to include a dragon for a party that was too low level to deal with it so like i removed its movement abilities yeah its movement and all its movement based abilities yeah so like flying yes and like the wing legendary actions and stuff like that so it was basically that's that's a nice way of it because it's a similar way when you introduce say like a young dragon to a a party yeah but i wanted yeah so i wanted it to be like you know kind of big and intimidating but it was a it was a fun way to because I mean, kind of nerf in, in any bit. party, the hardest thing with a dragon is the fact that it can just fucking fly away from you, and you got to find a way of dealing with that. As a majority of your party are all martial characters with no range capabilities. So I had, I had him; he was stuck in his lava bath, um, too fat to move. L- literally, Bowser from Super Mario Sunshine. It's a good sequence, and, and the dragon uh, CG is definitely the best of the yep. of the movie. They, they, they get bonus points for me from the the shot of Zank uh, jumping and planting the sword in its head. You had a really cool, also uh, you know, magic sword thing that, like, again, like a super powerful uh, DM controlled NPC with like crazy magic items and stuff. So yeah. it's like. He's got a sword that he can like kind of power up with magical energy that he uses to fight the head assassin guy. But then yeah, also with, how with it, his green flame sword. But yeah, but then how it also like he can like shoot the blade out and it you yeah. know will have a dagger as well. But like making it into like a ranged weapon as well was pretty cool. Um, That's the type was... of thing where you got to be real careful as a DM because you start to show your character having some real cool shit and all of a sudden you got to worry about your party trying to rob or kill them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, did they have some? They had some kind of looting going on. Did somebody like pick up? Uh, I feel like there was an example of somebody picking up a cool weapon. Oh, it was it was Olga with the. the it was with her Alex. It was like yeah, it's like yeah. defeating defeating an enemy and looting for a yeah. uh, uh, and taking his like, executioner's axe. Yeah, that was a cool cool little little reference. Um, yeah, there they, wasn't nearly enough murder hoboing going on for this to be real D and D. Well, because what was the what was it rated? What PG thirteen? I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there really wasn't any blood. Yeah, if, if this was a real D and D campaign, when the first time they get to a town, they would have gone into a shop, been there for four hours. Um, they would have then killed the shopkeep, robbed his store. Uh yeah, so they have the they have the helmet. Um, Zank leaves. He does his NPC pathing as he walks straight yep. away. Um, jankly to you, good sir. You are a a fine addition to this this story. Like when I first watched, it, I was like, oh, that's a bummer. I liked him a lot. I wish he stuck yeah. around. But like, I think it now was, I get it. But now I get it, and it was like I think it stuck around for just the right amount of time. That like, yeah. 
I think his character could have gotten old strong. if he was a, a main party cast. Like, yeah, if he I wouldn't necessarily time. know that it wouldn't have gotten old. If it was more just like that. It would. It would have just been like less impactful and, and just kind of like less funny, I guess. And yeah, not necessarily like that. I would have gotten annoyed with it, but it just. I just think that that type of good. humor has its point, and that the more you beat it down, the less it lands each time. I think it, I think it was smart to do that. Um, and yeah, just lots of lots of cool little kind of very subtle references for players, uh, um, and I guess probably more for DM. Plus, it's like it, it's a great DM NPC because he has like actual defined and like thought through character alignment and sticks to it. Unlike if he was a player character, where he'd be like, "Yes, I'm a lawful good paladin. Now watch me murder this family." Yeah, they they stole they stole food for their sick child, and stealing is bad. Therefore, they deserve death. <laughs> they broke the law. The punishment is is summary. Well, isn't that part of the like the parole hearing where they're like, we only stole from people who wouldn't feel it? It's like, how do you know that you only stole from people who wouldn't they feel were, it? They were Robin Hooding. They only stole from the rich. I, no, I was saying like I think one of the board members said that back to them. It's like, how do you know that the people you're robbing are only people who won't notice it? Oh, Simon has to try to attune to the helm. Yeah, but he's got too much self-doubt and depression in him to ever attune to such a powerful item. They, they can't, he can't get it to work. He keeps getting his ass kicked by the, what I'm assuming is meant to be like a projection of Elminster, his legendary. Well, later on, it's more of a projection of his own self. Yeah, it's a man. self, it's a, it's a self, it's a self projection. It's, it's him being like, oh, I can't live up to this, my, my famous, uh, ancestor. Um, but I'm pretty, they don't like outright say, oh yeah, this is supposed to be Elminster. They're like, yeah, it's, it's a, <clears throat> it is a, an ancestor of his. And, yeah. and that just like keeps kicking him out of the, his attunement process so they've got to go with plan b and there are so many different plans there was a funny bit of like the they've got plan that plan a was using the helmet plan b was doing this infiltration plan and then plan c just became plan a again and then but then they have a plan d in case plan c didn't work the way it wasn't plan c just plan a also also quintessential D D of a party getting into analysis paralysis yeah so there's there's an, a bit with the planning that i want to talk about uh but like it's the the whole thing about like how they have this intricate plan that they're that they 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 get their hands on some of the loot that's going to be part of the that's going to be part of the 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 pot for this tournament, the yeah. High Sun Games, and they put a, one of the portals from the hither thither staff into the the portrait of this painting, and they're going to use that to, once it's, it's a nice stashed. little scene. And it's, no, it's great. And it's really it's like there you see there are moments where like uh, of tension are the roles being passed and all these things, and it's this it's this really intricate plan and it's really clever, and then it just gets uh, immediately foiled by one bad role. Like yep. so, it was immediately you know. Uh... And speaking as a D and D player and a, a DM, if your plan can be foiled by one bad roll, it's a bad plan. Yeah, but so it's like, but I was gonna say it's too relatable. But then I was gonna say that where it's not relatable is that the plan was too smart to begin with. You know, yeah. too was too clever to begin with. That no actual party comes up with plans that that clever. The the best thing that my party has done is is get a ladder that they keep in the bag of holding and that they pull out and pretend to be like a, do the whole thing of like, we're a maintenance crew, you know, <laughs> we're, 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 we're here to do repairs. Dude, that, uh, that, that is, that's the IRL equivalent of wearing like a high vis vest to walk onto a job site. Dude, that's a, there's the bit in, uh, in trailer park boys where they do that they go and like yeah. steal steal piping or whatever by, by putting I, on hive is hive is i'm not even gonna and, lie and, and i went on. i went to a field deployment for one of my old jobs i can say that now because it's not my current job um so i'm wearing my hive is my hive is shirt and we stop at a gas station to pick up snacks and go to the bathroom before we get to the site and their bathrooms closed because they're doing uh work like a maintenance work and like tearing up the like part of the building in the parking lot so we look and there's a porta potty out in the work site so we just walk through the work site in our high-vis shirts go and use the porta potty and walk out and no one says anything just tipping hats to them you know it's like 
carry on we're just observing uh yeah they uh they sneak their way into the vault using the 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 item isn't there well nothing's there they sneak into the they sneak into uh simon does attune to the helm is able to open the the vault break morning cane and seal and nothing's there but then Doric, who has been, you know, chipping away at the stone that was blocking their the entrance to their portal, is able to get it. She does the whole the whole girlfriend, would you love me if I was still a worm? Yeah. Uh, where she turns and she chips a little bit away, turns into a worm, and is able to sneak through and get to where the actual loot is being. That stashed. would be such a hard t- part about dating a druid. It's like, would you love me if I was a worm? Turns into a worm. Turns into a worm. <laughs> Uh, she, yeah, she is like where the actual loot is, and it's underneath the arena for the the gladiatorial games. And that he's ha- that Ford is having all of the loot loaded onto a boat as he's going to flee the city. We did skip over. The, I forget at some. Well, I think it was with the with the backstory of Zank the Paladin, where you you he learn survived about, the original Red Death. Yeah, yeah, you learn about the the Wizards of Fey and what they did to create this army of undead, and and that that's what Sophina is going to do, and because she's that's why she did the Harper. Uh, you know, yeah, initiated the, the, the Harper thing was to get the artifact to do that. That was also stashed there. Um. And yeah, so she's she she has you know gone along with this plan and employed and worked with Forge to get all of the the people from Neverwinter and even from outside to come to to participate in the games and observe, so she could conduct the ritual and turn you know the whole city into her into her slave army. They... You know, if she had hair, I would be down for it. But you know, the lack of hair just makes it. Mm-hmm. No. Well, when she does her full-on ghoulish, uh, you know, Voldemort uh, reveal, yeah, uh, it's no, no longer interested. No thanks. Um, but she could use her tentacle spell on me if she wanted to. Um, the uh, yes, yeah, so the 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 group eventually. So what do they do? They they're oh they they're forced to participate in the games, but they are they yeah. escape the stadium. And there's. There's a lot. There's a lot of cool references in. Yeah, the, there's the old D and D TV show party. Yeah, I love that one. The, uh, the party that's uh, dressed up like the characters from the original animated show. There wasn't anybody who was dressed up as the dungeon master though. That was a bit. Uh, yep. A bit unfortunate because he's one of the more iconic ones. But yeah, you get the one of my favorite D and D creatures who I have my my little. My little statue on my on my table over here, the 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 gelatinous cube, the good old gelatinous cube. The gelatinous it's, cube was cool. I was personally hooting and hollering because of displacer beast. Yeah, we love we love the displacer beast, and then we got we got our you had to, you had to have a mimic in there somewhere. Yeah, like that's the 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 construction of the the games themselves were a a call out to like old kind of terrain dungeon design yeah. of like more literally labyrinth just, literally just like a maze yeah. type thing with in those kind of blocks were definitely like uh old terrain style things that used to be made um so that was that that kind of dungeon crawl aspect was was definitely a, an intentional reference uh but yeah they they're able to escape the games and are able to make their way to I mean who boat. would be crazy enough to jump into a gelatinous cube like just so crazy it might work uh and it does they i mean it's it's to... definitely a little bit of like they, they got you know the, the dreaded word plot armor where the the druid is able to shape shift and escape through the like the gelatinous cube opening from her arm sticking out before it like recloses back in the yeah so they're able to escape escape that they take control of the the boat with all the the loot on it and they're making their escape when they like put it all together and realize what Sophina is trying to do that she's draw, drawn this massive crowd turn them into a uh the you know the undead army and they they are going to you know they they decide to you know to be the heroes 
And I've got to be honest, though, I'm a little surprised through all of this with the Red Wizards and Sophina that we didn't get like a name drop of like a Vecna or something like that, just because of. So Vecna is is Vecna a Red Wizard? He's not a Red Wizard. No. It was just like when they do the initial drop and they show the Red Wizard betraying them to do the the thing, it's like you could have, like, that could have just as easily been a Vecna type. I mean, Zaz Tam is the guy who is like the main Red Wizard and I think has uh, some some more extensive lore. In I'm just the, speaking from a normie universe. perspective that normies would know who Vecna is. Sure. Yeah, so that is a lich. Uh is the most powerful red wizard of Thay. Where does because Vecna's a necromancer? Well Vecna is a Vic Vecna is also a, an arch lich. An arch lich, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's not as there. So, so Zaz is nowhere near as prominent as Vecna or Asarak. Yeah, they're like the two main witch antagonists. But like, he is, he does have some presence in other novels and yeah, adventures. But I don't know. I mean, it's it's always cool to shine a light on lesser known characters. You know, like, I'm not going to sit here and be mad no. if a, a Necron book wants to talk about a uh, Valgor no, instead of so Zerak an, or... These are novels. This is an accessory for campaign setting. I don't know what that one is. Yeah, I don't, I don't see, like, the... Hu- I'm not seeing that he was, like, a, a, a true, like, full, like, big bad for any one adventurer like any published adventure is more than just like you know was like the red wizards were put in as like you know source material stuff and various being ancillary D &D products going back as far as advanced dungeons and dragons um yeah so they they take the treasure they use the hither their staff again to uh to rain the riches down upon the city and it like it makes the the common people go crazy they leave the, so they so they vacate the the coliseum and they and it ruins sophia's you know, plan. imagine having this all-powerful spell that can create an undead army and it's limited by a fucking 300 foot range yeah 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 you you know, you have uh you, you've got a certain bubble that you can you can do it in so yeah they they just they everybody fucks off and she, her plan is foiled so they just got to fight her now um i didn't really enjoy the fight scene at the end um a li- little too marvel for my taste the like you get some good moments of the like bit where they're all with the fighting hand fight her. the hand fight was good but when they're all fighting her you're you're right it's it is very much of a this is an avengers moment even from like the yeah. how how they frame the scene yeah. it is very much i mean you could literally there's iron man blasting followed by a captain america punch followed by a you know, a lightning bolt from a wizard slash Thor, followed by, you know, the Hulk as an owl bear doing the literal. I, I did make note of that as well. That that once she's defeated by they, you know, they distract her, thinking that they've she's caught them in another time stop spell. But apparently, uh, so it's either that Simon has somehow leveled up high enough to get a ninth level spell slot, or he just passed his check to to use counter spell. I, I like uh, to think he just passed the the one in a million check. Yeah. Um to he he so he counters the spell. They pretend to be invisible just so she starts monologuing. And right. the daughter pretend the, to be frozen. There's an yeah, invisible daughter who's the, about the shitty, to cuff the, yeah, her. The, the shitty daughter, yeah, comes around and is invisible and puts the anti-magic cuff on her. And just like to point out that a red wizard who could identify a wild shaped fly in a room would definitely be able to tell someone does using she magical have, invisibility. Does she have true sight? That's the thing. Does she have does she have true sight? That's the only way. I don't know, do because could like it's a magical item, so doesn't it give off some sort of aura? Maybe. But you know, she's just she's just too too into her mind. That was also right? a point that uh Cinemasins made when they initially steal the amulet in their backstory monologuing. It's like, oh yes, the super like high level magic item, an amulet of invisibility, is sitting 
through one pane of glass right by the street. It, yeah, it's, I was going to say it's it's Chekhov's uh, Ring of Invisibility. Uh, yeah. You know, it's going to come back in the third, introduced in Act One, going to come back as the pivotal thing in Act Three, that the shitty daughter gets to have the decisive action that keeps her from doing magic. So then the Doric is in her elbow, owl, owl bear form. Yeah, it does the the Hulk smash. Yeah, to we, her. We really, just all that was missing was puny God. That like. If she if she had found a way to owl bear coup that, uh, yeah. So the oh my god, like my I I hated the daughter the most when when Olga is lying dying from the the poison of a red wizard's blade that has no cure. Just that yeah. just the acting was just so bad. I was like, get her out of here. And you just know you know from the from the from the start that of course you know like they're going to use the tablet of resurrection on. On, on her and not the mom because it's yeah. like yeah Olga is like actually her mom like she was an infant when her mother died yeah. she has this no memory has been more influential on her as a person than a mother who was around for a very short period of time yeah no shade to the mom but like yeah no. she died she I died. mean it's it's a character moment you know he's fighting with that the whole movie is every time there's a, a moment to think about it the dragonfly shows up uh yeah they the the, the then the, look at the camera and say you guys want to get shawarma yeah the red wizard is defeated no, the original lord never ember wakes up from his slumber that she that she cast him into and yeah. proclaims them heroes uh very very D D moment of saving the the lord of the land and becoming heroes after like murder hoboing your way through the world uh uh, Zank is the one who eventually finds Forge and sends him to the same prison that 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 Ed and Olga started off in. And you know the the movie ends with uh, another um, voiceover. Nardithin. They say another voiceover. You know, doing this other kind of lore dump as he's telling the story and tries to yeah, escape the same way through Jarnton, but they you know they have sealed up the the wit the singular window. So just yeah, bonk. Just instead, bonks himself and Jonathan against the brick wall. Uh, Yo, I'm just saying, Jonathan probably would have quit his job after being uh, smashed through a window and grabbed by prisoners. Or maybe, you know, I would have removed him from the board when it, he was used as an accomplice for an escape. Unwitting though. Oh, right. that. no. You remove him not because he did it knowingly. You remove it because you remove that ability. So one of the one of the main things I had because I want to talk about obviously you know we get to at the end of all of these like where does this sit as a as a movie and as an adaptation and I'll preface it by kind of giving away my little bit of it that I think this is a much better adaptation than it is a movie. Yes. Um. But uh, one of the, one of my like little nitpicks for its its adaptation thing is that it should have had some reference to how impossible it is to get a group together to play yep. D and D. Like there should have been something like where they had like they they built up some character that they were going to recruit or whatever, and he's just like, no, sorry, I'm busy. Um, or even like when they're trying to plan like say the initial infiltration for the druid it's like oh i can't do it that day because i have or s such and such yeah they, they should have done something like that where or they, they show up for the heist moment and someone's not there and they just get a like a magic uh sending spell of like oh sorry i'm not feeling super well today guys i think i'm gonna take tonight off yeah they should have done something like that but like the 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 perennial issue of trying to get a game together is most represented in this game's or in this movie's production, I should say, is yeah. that is something that started as far back as 2013, so gone through so many iterations. You know, this is no surprise to us anymore. You know, that that's the natural course of all of these adaptation properties, particularly mo the movies, is that they are in production for so long. They have so many different people attached to them. They go through directors so fucking off and like you know no no what? good consistent no that DMs never here. happens the blade movie released four years ago by the first director 
like they switched from Warner Brothers to Paramount. They had, I think, like one, two, three different. Uh, like Joe Manganello was gonna like write a script version of it at one point, uh, and then that got scrapped. And yeah, it was moved to Has moved, or Hasbro moved it to Paramount. Then I th- then I think there was some level because when did it actually come out? It was originally slated for 2021, but no, it came out in 2020. No, it came out last year. It came out in 2023. It was March. It was March 2023. Uh, but yeah, so it probably had some level of COVID, COVID, uh, non story del- delays as well. But like, yeah, there was a bunch of different versions of the script that eventually got. So there was like one of. Not the second to most recent version, those writers got a story credit, not a writer's credit, that went to the final directing pair of Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly. Who are you? A were you a um, did you ever watch Freaks and Geeks? No show, so he's like the he's like the 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 main kid from the geeks side of it. He was say, a, a kid, a child actor who I don't remember if they played D and D actively in any episodes, but they were the, definitely the type of kids of that era yeah, that would have played D, that would have played D and D. So it was a pretty kind of serendipitous and 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 faded role for him. But yeah, so I think he's actually gone on to do more yeah writing and directorial stuff. Uh, but yeah, so they they were the final pair that that came in and and brought this in. But like they were like yeah at one point. Uh, so I don't know who that is. Uh, but one point, The Rock was tied in somewhere. Oh God! Uh, I really don't need to see him somehow in a jungle setting, wearing uh tan jungle explorer clothes, raising an eyebrow. Yeah. Um, one, another point, Ansel Elgort was was tied to it, and then yeah, finally Chris Pine. And then the the cast came together with Michelle Rodriguez. Chris Pine was like, "Yo, I got to get Justice. into another movie because I can't have Wonder Woman 1984 be the most recent thing on my uh, my resume." He is still the best Hollywood Chris by far. Well, I agree. I'm just saying that at that point in time, Wonder Woman 1984 was the last dude, thing that, on his dude, resume. That, dude, that movie fucking sucks so bad. Oh my god! I just want to know what the pitch was in that movie when they're like, "Yo, so you're gonna come back in someone else's body, and that dude is gonna get raped over and over again by an Amazonian woman." Like, no, he would like it. You know, she's so beautiful. He would be totally into losing all bodily autonomy to her. <laughs> yeah, dude, that movie's fucking terrible. If we just don't show what he actually looks like, and we just put chris pine in place you'll never know that what's happening don't forget is there they count on people forgetting yeah i think we, that, we were gonna do a, a grading of adaptation versus movie quality. right i mean yeah, we're always gonna we always end with that and i'll start with saying that this is like i think a pretty damn successful adaptation of of D without having to even do the the kind of the obvious like almost like the the Jumanji, I will say there was the one thing that they could have done. Yeah, the the Jumanjification would have been at the end when they've like finished up zooming out and having players sitting around a table with a like, bunch well, of what, minis. Yeah, well, it wasn't that fun? Yeah, like uh, yeah, like, I, I, I'm I'm of the opinion that I'm kind of like that. It's it's a testament to the their ability to make this a to make you know good references and a good adaptation in ways that weren't super like a whole a whole point at the screen type of shit like that yeah. they it was a testament that they could do all of that and without having to resort to i think they also did level. a good job of making D D look cool so that maybe there'd be some people out there who watch the movie and be like wow is that what D is actually like it's like no not at all you're gonna be you're going to meet once every three months. Um, half your table is going to forget what their character's abilities are and constantly. You're, and you're going to spend like two hours doing turn-based combat where everybody, again, takes an hour. Or like, just like 45 minutes to decide their what they do on their turn. 
And yes, that's one of those one of the reasons that listening to Critical Role became so hard for me is when you have people like Liam who knows exactly what he wants to do before his turn shows up. So when it's time to go, he's you know I'm doing this. Here's my role. Let's go. And then you compare it to say uh, not to name drop anyone, but say a Talison. Who, who, whose tendency is like, I'm going to do something weird here real quick. Goes quiet. Actually, no, I can't do that because I just read my ability and now I actually understand what it means. So now I'm going to pivot and do this other thing. Wait, I can't do that either because I already used my reaction for this turn. Okay, so I'm going to then pivot and do this other. Okay, no, I can't do that either because I've already used my bonus action. Uh, so I think I'm just going to hit him with my my stick. Yeah. Yeah, dude, uh, it's, 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 it can be tough, folks. Like, I've, like, I have largely turned against it as a system, and particularly with the things that we're seeing about the, 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 the new the system new, makes me want to. Yeah. I hate to be the, like, back in my day, because I only started on 9th edition or 10th edition. 5th edition, um, you're thinking of, you're thinking of. 40K. Oh, 40, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Sorry, that's Wrong another table. one that, Wrong that's a whole table. other. Uh, yeah. Wrong t- um. Like I started on fifth edition, so I don't have a like three point five is superior. Um, well, like, me too. I mean, I've only played fifth edition as well because it's now but like fifth edition for so far superior long. to one D and D. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I want to explore some other some other systems really. Um, and if like I if I need that fantasy itch, like I think I'm gonna just go to Pathfinder. Um. So this was like an interesting idea. Like you were talking about like how, uh, you know, this, this did a good job of making D and D look cool and like brought things in. I, th- I think they did a, re- they, they were smart to like frame it as a heist movie yeah. because it's like, that's a, that is a genre that is much more easy to grab onto without having to deal with like the proper name, proper noun place name type of bullshit yeah. that a lot of no, no like high politics. Like. no, but I think that was smart. I think that was that was that was a smart way to do it. Um, to get people in the door. Uh, you know, the uninitiated. Right. I just uninitiated, said this movie isn't political. Yeah, so the uninitiated and the the player alike, because you know, heist genre is a well known subgenre of D D, right? There are pl- like yeah. like they, they said it here somewhere where it's it was like the you know, getting a bunch of characters together to do a job, right? Yeah. You know, like that's, that's you son of a bitch, I'm in. That's the definition of a heist movie as well, but like that—that's what—that's what you know. The an adventure hook is for D and D. I don't know. I think uh, I don't. I don't know if I want to go so high as like. I think I want to like. I want to leave it at like a, a an eight point four as like my. So you're you're right where I was on adaptation. I was eight point five. I was just going to round it out to the the halfway number. Yeah, I'm fine to do 8.5 as well. Just like, you know, we don't have to do any math. It's just like, yeah, 8.5. It's, like, it's a solid is... B. They did a good job. They didn't hurt anyone's feelings. I I agree. I thought it was just like, for all the things that we pointed out, it, there were fun things that were that were little kind of, you know, Easter eggy and fun things to point the, at the screen. Yeah, there's, if, if you're I mean, in there's the so know. much hidden stuff, like when they're initially going to get executed, um, the two creatures on top of the rampart, those are rust monsters yeah. and they're fighting over a piece of metal. That's a nice little hint. Like, and that's a throwaway. No one who doesn't understand that will pick up on that. Those are just rats. And I like things that they don't, you don't have to like, they don't linger on these things so often. And they're like, Hey, Hey, do you see do you see what we're doing for you, you little piggies? Yeah, they didn't. They didn't walk under and go, "Oh my God, rust monsters!" I didn't know you guys had those out here. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that level of it—that it was subtle enough, but it was, but you know, clear enough. You know, it, it's they were there, but then the things that uh, you know, people could laugh at the at the at the paladin. They could laugh at like him walking in a straight line, just because it works on the one level of it just being silly and funny. Yeah, good. Good to be like. And then to be like, oh, I know what that is. You know, like, I know what, what you know. I mean, when they're, when they're doing the flashback to the battle scene, when they're talking to the corpses, and, like, they, they introduce him as a named dragon. I don't remember his name. Uh, but, like, he, he flies through. He's a black dragon, so he spits acid. Yeah. Like. Doing some good. No, that was a nothing. nice little, like, a little thing. Instead of having him be, like, a red dragon who does fire, that's so played out. Or a white dragon who spits ice. Like, we've seen that before. 
It's like a green dragon with poison might not have been like as easily identifiable as uh you know acid melting the ground away and um you didn't see anybody get their face melted off though so like that's again you know, 13 a point deducted um yeah so then in terms of a movie um i don't know i i still think it's enjoyable i think it's I, fun I, enough i think I it do, falls into that like 7.5 category as a movie i do think though even though we're saying like, we, we are saying these things like oh like these still work even if you're not a yeah. you know if you're not in the know i still don't i'm not sure that you know a non D player enjoys this as much you know i think really enjoys i mean this it, it's much. probably just more of a generic fantasy movie at that point um and so at, at that level i just i don't think it hits as much and yeah i put See, it like I, a, I, do, I detract more from it because of how much of the marvel of things it does right like there's there's very much an influence on it based on Marvel's type of humor and like the the layout of certain scenes and yeah so I think little like a, derivative I think like just like yeah maybe it insists like upon itself therefore I do not enjoy yeah I think it's like I I go even more to like a seven so if like you're a seven five I'm a seven then it's like seven point two five final score yeah that seems reasonable enough. I, I just threw it at 7.5 because, like, I clearly enjoyed this movie enough to watch it a couple times. Several times, yeah. Well, I mean, one of them was a, uh, a cold medicine fueled delirium. Yeah, fugue state. You watched it in a fugue state. You didn't, you know, you know, you thought you were you were in the in the adventure. Um, yeah, I thought it was good. Um, this is weird. Okay, so yeah, so I just I just like I wasn't even looking. Clearly, but yeah, like the the Bradley Cooper bit as the as Michelle Rodriguez's ex husband was cast in a, his cameo role during post production. Huh. So he filmed, yeah, he filmed his part on a blue screen and was inserted. You know, clearly, ob, you know, super obvious. Yeah. Um, I do like at the end where they're given their medals and and it's a halfling man who gives her. Her medal and yep. she gives gives him the eyes. That was pretty. Hey man, the heart wants what the heart wants, mm -hmm. and sometimes the big barbarian woman just wants a small man she can smother. Yeah. Death, Death by, by snoo snoo, snoo, as they yeah. say in Futurama. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was fun. This was a. I enjoyed watching it. It was. I I still just think it was too long. It just felt like it. But like I couldn't think of necessarily maybe you cut a little bit in the underdark, but like that had some of the best bits. I was gonna say I, I wouldn't take away from the underdark. If anything, maybe you you cut down on like the party planning setup. Like maybe you don't have Simon's bit run out as long. Maybe you, you, the Doric bit uh, you cut that a little. You set up when she does her wild shapes. Maybe you shorten that a little bit. Yeah, because like you like, could probably you could probably skip the like fly to mouse, mouse to person, person back to mouse part, and just have it stick as the mouse running out the whole time. Yeah, there are probably yeah, little bits here. There, there's no like, there's no like, there's no giant scene that doesn't need to exist. So I'm like, oh yeah, like let's get this out of here, or that doesn't everything offer with the daughter funny or yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, get get the daughter out of here. Um, all right, yeah. So those are those are my. How thoughts. how did this all powerful red wizard come in and kill the the mom slash wife and not hear the screaming child in the the in in the floorboard? Yeah, in the hidden cupboard. Uh, yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's so thank you for stopping stopping in with just Matt and I. Maybe a little more rambly today. Um. But it was good. I enjoyed watching the movie. Enjoyed talking about it. It's 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 definitely on the 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 higher middle to lower high end. If that makes any sense of of, of all of the things we've watched, I would watch this again compared to say, uh, huh. like the I'm, Halo show. <laughs> I'm still I'm still mad that uh that I watched Borderlands still mad at myself that i did that hey man we directly contributed to that 21 million dollar box office actually no i think that one made a little more i think 21 was when i saw the crow 
uh, ex- exited worldwide theaters with. We're in, we're in peak cinema territory right now. Hey man, gaming is all about remakes and remasters right now. So, uh, yeah. So obviously, we won't decide on what we're what we're covering for our adaptation next month, and probably until like the week before. That t- tends to be our our pattern here, unless we decide to do a show, in which case we'll have to plan that out earlier. Um, we will be back next week with our news roundup for the month of September. Got some stuff to talk about. It'll be interesting too because it'll fall perfectly timed where I might have a 30th anniversary PS5 Pro on pre order and I will be coping hard. Mm. I, as I said to you guys, like I'm still very much against the pricing of the PS5 Pro and like don't really feel like that the value thing is there, but when I log on to the 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 queue for you know pre-ordering something from the 30th anniversary edition, yeah. it depends if the demon takes over me. Yep. Because I feel like no, I'm, I'm, I'm get... very much in the like. I definitely think I want to get something out of that, whether or not it's just like a dual sense edge, which would probably yeah. be the the most likely thing for me to buy. Me too. That's what I'm thinking. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll check out the edge, but like. Well, I'm going to do something probably like convince myself that like, oh, I'm going to enter the queue for the for the pro bundle. I'm going to do it just because it's funny and, and I'm going to take someone's spot and then I'm like, going to get there. And... Well, I'm just going to be like, oh, but like I'm I'm probably not going to get it. Right. So let's just let's just see. Let's let fate decide. Let's let yeah. the dice decide, you know, if I if I'm going to get it or not and probably spend twelve hundred dollars that I don't fucking have. Yep. No, there's there's some really funny like. um as much as I love to shit on Redditors because it's one of my favorite pastimes as a Redditor personally, you know, we love to eat ourselves. Is is Redditors discovering what limited edition means for the first time? Be like, why isn't this just like a full production scale? It's like, that's what limited edition means. They're yeah. trying to drive up hype and make you buy it. But are the, is that going to be for the the base level? I mean, we're, we're getting outside so the pro, of territory. The Pro of is the only one they have about, explicitly right? spoken about as having 12,300 copies of. Yeah, as limited number. And that, that's things. a very specific number because uh, December 3rd is when the PlayStation 1 launched globally. So 12.3. Um They haven't necessarily mentioned the base, like the slim having a a limited quantity like that. When the PS4 had its 20th anniversary skin of similar style, it was 50,000 units. So maybe you you run into a similar like 50K for the the base unit and 12,000 for the pro. Yeah, all right. We'll talk about it more because I'm. Let's just add that to this episode. All right, guys, let's talk about the PS5 Pro. (laughs) Let's not. Uh, I've got to go paint my back deck. It yeah, I'm, I got to eat exciting. lunch because I'm starving. Isn't that exciting for me? All right. Well, you got we'll... you got to find some downtrodden southern boy that you can convince to pay you to paint your deck for you. Do a Tom Sawyer to him. Yeah. All right, folks. We will see you next week. We'll have lots to talk about. Uh, we will see you then. Uh, but until then, you can follow us on and support us on twitch.tv slash campaign comrades. Uh, check out the Patreon for weekly written content from yours truly. And yeah, free of charge, not behind a paywall, open to the public. Uh, Patreon.com slash campaign comrades, I think is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's it. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. If you go to Patreon specially, you can see my feet pics if you pay for them. <laughs> yeah, that's on our, on our super high exclusive tier. That's, that's on Fansly? Yeah. Check out the link.